from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipakshi and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of our country's diversity. India's true glory can be seen in its diversity and its ability to beautifully intertwine different traditions, languages and lifestyles in a pot of cultures. Home to a number of tribal communities, authorities keep on organizing different events to promote their culture and lifestyle. So today we take you to the National Tribal Dance Festival in Bhubaneswar city which celebrates the rich and diverse cultural heritage of India. Take a look. <laughs> Sitting in the Adivasi exhibition ground in Bhuvaneshwar, audiences were awestruck to witness beautiful dance performances as tribes from across the country gathered at the venue to display their traditional dance numbers. This was the view at the National Tribal Dance Festival that showcased the beauty and resplendence of tribal dancers from different parts of the country. This festival was inaugurated in the capital city of Orissa with much fervor and enthusiasm. The event is an annual observance organized by SCNST Research and Training Institute of Bhuvaneshwar with the support from the Ministry of Tribal Affairs, Government of India. Today we had a performance of eight states uh, uh, in this evening. Uh, the uh, participants from Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan, all tribals group are from their dances today. Uh, very, active, very captivating dances were staged today. And the purpose of this national uh, tribal dance festival is that the, all the tribals group of different part of this country, they can uh, perform at one stage and the people of other state can uh, meet them as well as they can see the dance, the different dance forms of the tribals being performed at one single stage. Artists from 14 states, including those from Arunachal Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand participated in this three-day dance festival. Different tribal communities like the Gon tribe of Chhattisgarh, the Ratwa tribe of Gujarat, the Galo tribe of Arunachal Pradesh and the Saharia tribe of Rajasthan showcase their beautiful tribal dance performances. The dancers were decked up in unique and colourful traditional attires that had the audience spellbound and were a treat for the eyes. This tribal, National Tribal Dance Festival is a very, very good program because uh, all the uh, Indian national uh, different states are coming here. And we don't know what, uh, what dance is uh, Maharashtra tribal. And also Gujarat and even uh, Odisha. And now we are here, national, uh, the organization uh, organized this National Tribal Dance Festival. And we saw it. And I think about, uh, I hope that we we also see and see and see and see and uh, again. हम लोग को सीखने को मिला कि हर हर स्टेट से अलग अलग डांस देखने को मिला भाषा भी अलग अलग भाषा को भी मिला और हम लोग से एक एक मेल मिला हुआ और हम लोग सब एक दूसरे से हम लोग मिले हम लोग डांस के डांस के हिसाब से हम लोग देहात में देहात में भी हम लोग डांस करते हैं और हम लोग हर टाउन सिटी मैंने हम लोग को कि जिधर हम लोग सरकारी से राष्ट्रीयन किए हुए हैं और राष्ट्रीयन के माध्यम से हम लोग कहां बुलावट होता है वही पहुंचते हैं हम लोग on the sidelines of the dance festival, a three-day-long national crafts mela was also organized to promote tribal handicrafts and handloom products. Different tribes from 14 states including Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Telangana, Rajasthan and others participated in the event and showcased various types of handicraft items like bamboo craft, stonework, woodwork, iron craft, textiles and others. 
The Crafts Mela is a platform for celebrating the diverse cultural traditions of various tribes of India, along with providing a platform for boosting their business. काम हमने हमारे पूर्वजों से सीखा है जो हमारे पुरानी पीढ़ी जो काम करती थी उसी को हम फॉलोअप करते हैं और उन्हीं को देख के बनाते हैं दीवारों पे अपने जो घर का मिट्टी से लिपते हैं घर के बाहर जो होता है सीमेंट नहीं होता है कच्चे घर होते हैं वहाँ पे तो उसके अंदर कांच लगाना मांडना बनाना मेहनती से संबंधित दीवार पर काम करते नीचे फर्श पर बनाते हैं इसमें अलग अलग प्रकार से महिलाएं जैसे मांडना बनाती हैं जैसे मैं खुद मांडना बनाती हूँ हमारे साथ में जो दूसरे लोग हैं वो भील आर्ट के अंदर भील फिगर मतलब कल्चर बताते हैं वो कि किस प्रकार की कल, मतलब शैलियाँ हैं कि किस किस से लोग काम करते हैं लोग किसे पूछते हैं लोग किसे खाते हैं कैसे घर में रहते हैं क्या कपड़े पहनते हैं This was the 12th edition of the National Tribal Dance Festival and the 10th edition of the National Tribal Crafts Mela. Events like these continue to provide a platform for tribal artists to showcase their rich cultural heritage. Along with that, it also helps the culture of Indian tribes reach mainstream. Moving on, India is known to be the land where the Sufi school of thought flourished in its true essence. A number of Sufi saints from across the world settled in India and spread the message of peace and harmony. Hazrat Munawar Ali is one among them. The saint dedicated his whole life to spreading the wisdom of Sufism and today his shrine is a popular pilgrimage site in Prayagraj and is visited by the people irrespective of the caste and religion. Take a look. The shrine of Sufi saint Hazrat Munawar Ali Shah in Uttar Pradesh city of Prayagraj has long remained a place of harmony and unity for people of all faiths. Every day devotees from across the nation irrespective of their religion visit the shrine to offer prayers to the revered Sufi saint. The shrine of Hazrat Munawar Ali Shah is a symbol of the pluralistic and syncretic culture of India. पंद्रह साल से हम आ रहे हैं और मेरी जेठानी की थी मेरे पति को और हमको बेटी भी मेरी हुई यहीं पे बाबा के कर्म से बेटी हुई है मेरी बाबा के यहाँ जो भी आता है हिंदू मुस्लिम सबकी बाबा पूरी करते हैं सबका बाबा सुनते हैं हमको भी बाबा बहुत कुछ दिए आज भी हम आए हैं तो बाबा से लेने ही आए हैं यहाँ की मान्यता बहुत है कि जो भी आता है यहाँ बाबा के पास से ले ही जाता है खाली झोली कभी कोई नहीं लौटता है यहाँ से Although hundreds of devotees visit the shrine every day but Fridays are usually busy when an enormous number of believers come to visit the holy shrine irrespective of their faiths and religions people visit the dargah to get the blessings of the legendary saint the devotees believe that the saint fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty handed from here यहाँ से तो यही तालीब है लोगों को यहाँ से सबक लेना चाहिए तमाम बुजुर्गान दीन जहाँ जहाँ पे इस तरह के सूफी संत हैं खान कहें हैं बुजुर्गान दीन का दरबार है या यही दरबार है यहाँ पर देख लिए यहाँ पर जो भी आता है उसके साथ मतलब अच्छा सलूक यहाँ पे हमारी कमेटी है हमारे देख करने वाले खान में दरबार में मौजूद हैं वो लोग देख करते हैं और सबके साथ यकसा व्यवहार और यकसा सलूक करते हैं सबको सबको अच्छे अंदाज से सबके साथ पेश आते हैं वहाँ भेदभाव नहीं है सारी चीज़ें हैं और लोगों को एहसास भी होता है कि हाँ यहाँ पर जो है लोग देख रेख करते हैं और किसी किस्म की कोई परेशानी नहीं है वहाँ हिंदू मुस्लिम सिख ईसाई हर किस्म के लोग रहते भी हैं और कभी कोई परेशानी नहीं होती कोई उनको अगर परेशानी होती है तो हम लोग देखते हैं और उनकी मदद भी करते हैं India has remained an epicenter of many such sites that strengthen the bond of secularism. People from all faiths rising above their ethnicities, castes, creeds and religiosity gather at these places and spread the message of peace and brotherhood for coming generations to follow. And now a round up of some of the major stories that made news recently. Indian Navy commissioned an indigenously developed anti-submarine warfare shallow watercraft vessel named INS Antrod into service from a seaport in eastern Kolkata city. 
This is the second of eight such vessels that are made for the Navy by India-based shipbuilding company Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers. INS Andhrod, which derives its name from an island of India's southern Lakshadweep Federal Territory, is equipped with state-of-art weapon systems such as lightweight torpedoes and submarine detecting sensors. These ships are called anti-submarine warfare shallow water crafts. Uh, the very name says it is anti-submarine warfare. So their role is to protect the coastal waters where the depth is less from the enemies. So these ships will be basically operating in low draft conditions along the shore of whichever port they are deployed. India is desperate to replace its aging submarine fleet with 11 of its 16 conventional submarines more than two decades old and as it seeks to counter China's growing presence in the Indian Ocean. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government wants India to manufacture more weapons at home in collaboration with foreign partners after decades of being one of the world's largest armed importers. Every year on March 20, the world celebrates World Sparrow Day to increase awareness about house sparrows. Conservationist God of Bajpai makes wooden sparrow houses and distributes them to the people. Bajpai says their efforts have put a stop to declining population and with the planting of trees, sparrows have begun to return to urban areas as well. He claims the sparrows have increased by 70,000 to 80,000 in the last 7 to 8 years through their campaign. गौरैया के जो अंडे और बच्चे हैं वो सबसे ज़्यादा गिरकर मर रहे हैं तो इनकी एक आबादी ऐसी है जो जीवन के प्रथम 15 से 20 25 दिन में ही समाप्त हो रही थी और जिसका प्रतिशत बहुत ज़्यादा था हमारे अनुमान के हिसाब से 60 प्रतिशत से ज़्यादा ये था कि इनकी आबादी गिर के मर रही है तो फिर हमने इनको सुरक्षित घर देना शुरू किया तो मेरा ये प्रयास है कि जितनी भी अपने आम जन हैं उनको ये संदेश देना चाहता हूँ कि वो अपने घर पर घोसले लगाए Sparrow sightings have significantly diminished over the last few years in India because of noise and air pollution, raging constructions and deforestation. Several conservationists have taken it upon themselves to preserve the beloved birds from predators and are providing them with food. India's first fully automated biryani dispensing kiosk in southern Chennai city is bringing gastronomical delight to food lovers by delivering hot meats through an entirely automatic system. Inspired by Japan's self-serving kiosks, it was installed by the startup company Bai Vitu Kalyanam has machines where customers can choose from an extensive menu and get the biryani within 3 to 5 minutes. This is a new attempt, uh, you know, that we have uh, tried doing it uh, in India because many people have seen uh, vending machine, uh, automatic uh, self-ordering kiosk uh, in abroad, especially in Japan and other uh, countries. So basically in India, we don't have such kind of an automated technology wherein uh, they still have to, you know, go to a biller, counter, cashier, and then, you know, they have to, you know, place an order. Uh, by seeing the face and uh, nowadays you know we have a contactless uh, initiative uh, you know from the government so this is a kind of an initiative wherein you go there on the system you place an order and uh, you pay by card or upi and then uh, you know your uh, package will be ready in uh, in say 3 4 minutes or less than that Though several Indian shops and marketplaces have automated vending machines, which usually have canned food or packed food, this is the first attempt in the country to serve fresh food using an automatic dispensing system. Well, Sufism has entrenched itself at the center of cultural and spiritual life in India. The Argaas of Sufi saints in almost every part of the country are the rich reservoirs of this tradition. The Darga of Hazrat Durvesh Rehmatullah in the city of Gaya is one such place where devotees from all religions come and offer prayers to the Sufi saint who lit the path of virtue, wisdom and peace for his fellow beings and followers. Have a look. 
an epicenter of faiths, a place where brotherhood and bonhomie between as many religions could be seen flourished and prospered at its best. The Dargah of Hazrat Magdoom Darvesh Rahmatullah, situated in the holy town of Kaya, is one such melange of diversities. Situated in the small village of Bitto Sharif, the shrine witnesses a rush of activities throughout the day. Whether one is Hindu, Muslim, Sikh or from any other community, the aroma of the shrine serenades them into cheerfulness and a belief of fulfilment ensues in them. और जो मनोरोगी खास करके जो आते हैं साइकोलॉजिकल पेशेंट्स उनका बहुत अच्छा इलाज होता है मेंटल केसेस के जो पेशेंट होते हैं उनकी दुआओं से मालिक की दुआ से मालिक की दया से ठीक होकर जाते हैं और इसीलिए लोगों का आना जाना लगा रहता है इट इज बिलीव दैट द सूफी सेन फुलफिल्स द विशेस ऑफ ऑल दोस हु कम ओवर हियर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट कॉर्नर्स ऑफ द कंट्री People of all faiths have deep faith in the saint who throughout his entire life worked for the welfare of humanity. यहां हम लगभग 3 साल से आ रहे हैं बाबा के पास इनका क्या कहना है मतलब जिंदा हैं हम लोग तो बाबा के दर के वजह से नहीं तो जिंदा नहीं रहते मेरा बच्चा बिल्कुल इतना बढ़िया हो गया यहां से कि आईआईटी कोटा में पढ़ाई कर रहा है बाबा के एहसान हम क्या कहें कि लफ्ज में कहने वाली बात नहीं है सिंस एजेस द सूफी सीन्स लाइक हजरत मखदूम दरवेश रहमतुल्लाह हैव प्रोपगेटेड द मैसेज ऑफ स्पिरिचुअलिज्म एंड हार्मनी इन आवर कंट्री एंड देयर टीचिंग्स आर स्टिल प्लेइंग अ सिग्निफिकेंट रोल इन स्ट्रेंथनिंग द थ्रेट ऑफ सेक्युलरिज्म And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Introducing innovative and sustainable solutions, a Dubai-based company came up with different models to face water scarcity, mitigate floods and enhance desert farming in the UAE. Dek Richens Sponge City is a new urban model that uses permeable pavers made from desert sand to retain rainwater sustainably in underground honeycomb storages. The company launched its model in the Emirates and is in the process of implementing it soon in the country. This surface area it allows us to collect larger volume of water. and all the water collected as we are collecting it or harvesting it we can store it and that all that water is channeled into our storage facility which collects the water and stores it sustainably the beauty about our storage honeycomb storage is that the water remains fresh for a very long period without use of electricity without use of chemicals and all the water which is collected harvested and stored has to be used responsibly In its efforts to reaching net zero emissions by 2050 and reducing its carbon footprint, the UAE has showed interest in the innovative company's creation. Breathing through a plastic cup filled with sand and water which appears to be immiscible, the 42-year-old Indian CEO showcased another creation of his, breathable or what he called magic sand. Promising 80% water saving, Dake Rechsen said that the breathable sand technology can turn the Gulf country which relies on water desalination into a green forest. In an annual celebration to kick off St. Patrick's Day festivities, Florida's Hillsboro River transformed into a bright shade of green for the River O Green Fest. Hundreds of spectators could be seen on the Tampa waterfront watching the dyeing of river as boats swirled and dropped green dye. Live music and a pet costume contest was scheduled to follow the event according to the official program of the celebration. Just outside Indonesia's planned new capital 
on Borneo Island, a female orangutan catches a banana with one hand thrown by a conservationist across the river while she hangs onto a tree branch with the other hand. She is one of 127 orangutans that the Borneo Orangutan Survival Foundation is helping to reintroduce into the wild in East Kalimantan, Samboja district. They have already lost their homes due to deforestation on the island, often linked to the expansion of palm oil and timber plantations as well as coal mining sites. The Indonesian government has promised to protect wildlife and reforest large parts of the project which has been marketed to investors as smart green city of the future fully powered by renewable energy. But environmentalists are concerned the construction spanning nearly 2,60,000 hectares will affect some Borneo's endemic fauna including endangered ones like the long-nosed monkey, Irrawaddy dolphins, orangutans and the vulnerable Bornean sun beer. The Nusantara capital city authority says mangroves would be replanted in the areas and guidelines have been drawn up for workers who may come in contact with wildlife. Foundations are currently being laid for government buildings, while developers are expected to start construction on homes that 16,000 civil servants, military and police officers will move into next year. Nusantara will be declared the new capital in the first half of 2024. Key government buildings including a palace and a presidential office must be ready by August next year, when Indonesia celebrates its 79th Independence Day. Well, at the end, we'll take you to Siliguri City, where photographers from various countries exhibited their work at the International Photography Festival. It's been said that a painter constructs, but a photographer discloses. Celebrating the spirit of capturing moments in the form of pictures, a two-day-long international photography exhibition and competition was organized recently in the Siliguri town of West Bengal. Organized at the Siliguri Ramkinkar Hall, the exhibition had a total of 108 photographs on display. Siliguri Photographers Association का ये पहली बार है ये exhibition 2023 में ये international photography exhibition है और इसके साथ competition भी हुआ है तो हम लोगों के पास अपना state state के सिवा बंगाल के बाहर से पूरे भारत से आया है फोटोग्राफ्स जाने माने फोटोग्राफर्स के फोटो आए हैं ताकि बाहर के भी आए हैं बांग्लादेश नेपाल भूटान यूके यूएसए ठीक है दुबई से भी आए हैं स्विट्जरलैंड से भी आए हैं फोटोग्राफ्स तो फोटोग्राफी नेचर फोटोग्राफी में जो आउटपुट आ रहा है वो जब लोग देखेंगे उसके ऊपर से उस अपना सब्जेक्ट के ऊपर जिस चीज़ का हम फोटो ले रहे हैं उसके ऊपर लोगों को एक प्यार आता है कि यह चीज है बोल के हमारे पास इसको बचाना चाहिए इसका क्या भूमिका है पर्यावरण में इसका क्या सब्जेक्ट है कैसा कंपोनेंट है हम लोग का इकोसिस्टम में इसका क्या जरूरत है ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय द सिलिगुरी फोटोग्राफर एसोसिएशन द एग्जीबिशन सॉ पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ फोटोग्राफर्स फ्रॉम डिफरेंट स्टेट्स अक्रॉस इंडिया एंड कंट्रीज लाइक इंडोनेशिया नेपाल बांग्लादेश एंड द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका the pictures at display were categorized in five sections wildlife street people landscape close ups and wedding photography the main motive behind organizing this exhibition was to spread awareness regarding the conservation of flora and fauna bahut hi bahut hi sarahaniya matlab ye step hai ke kyunki हम लोग हम लोगों के यहाँ पे नॉर्थ बंगाल में स्पेशली जाना जाता है कि जंगल का एरिया बहुत है मतलब वन्य प्राण और जीव वैचित्र बहुत सारा है तो उस हिसाब से देखते हुए कि बहुत सारे लोग जो आम नागरिक है शहर के उनको बहुत कुछ पता नहीं होता है कि जंगल के बारे में या किस तरह के जानवर होते हैं उनका प्रकृति में क्या महत्व है उनको बचाने के लिए क्या किया जाए तो ये सब चीज़ें फोटोग्राफ के द्वारा यहाँ पर प्रदर्शित हो रहा है तो लोगों में साधारण आम इंसान में जैसे कि मुझे अगर नहीं पता होता मुझे नहीं पता है जैसे कि तो मुझे बहुत सारा चीजें समझने मिलेगा दिस वॉज दर्ड एडिशन ऑफ द फेस्टिवल विच वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज दिस ईयर 
Initiatives like these not only play a great role in providing a platform to budding photographers, but also help in spreading awareness regarding various issues. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host Lipakshi and it's goodbye from the entire production team.